<clears throat> Welcome back guys to our chess actually chess.org so uh, I'll be playing with a new uh, defense of Sicilian so I'm using John Brazil my account is uh, 19,000 not 19,000 but 1,998 and my opponent is Henkel Roken <clears throat> He have uh, 1,978. 1, so, uh, so the game is called Sicilian Snyder Valation. Snyder? Something like that. Snyder. So it starts with E4. So C5 is the Sicilian, the aggressive way. <clears throat> Here he played the B3, which is what they call the Sicilian defense Snyder Valation. So this is quite very modern and this is quite not necessarily new, but this is uh, rarely used in chess or on high level chess games. So uh, you can use this as a <clears throat> uh, arsenal or a secret weapon or surprise weapon to your opponent. So I played here in C six because I don't really know on. The, the main line but I just play with my instinct and play with chess theories uh, because here I don't really know what's the line so based on theories that you have to develop knight before your bishops and play for the center so that's the that's the early game theory of chess so here he played the bishop b2 so he is I think the Snyder variation is somehow created uh, just to uh, deny deny black of making a dragon. So if this is a counter for the dragon or for any dragon dragon related defense for black. So this may be a good if your enemy is very very used to play dragon. So you can play this Snyder variation to. As you can see, you cannot go for bishop g7, right? So because this is already already open, so that that is suicidal if you do the g7 and bishop g7. So here I play just the simple chess theory. Just play d6. Just normally develop, and he here you play the knight f3. In here, actually I play there the very very sticky develop knight f6. Actually, you can play it here. You can take this one because after this, my structure is somehow uh, destroyed already by white, right? So if I take this, so I have a very bad structure here. But he didn't do that. Instead, what he did is he played knight c3. So after playing this knight c3, he defeated the purpose of playing the bishop g b2. So actually, if you play bishop b2, you are uh, looking to take advantage in the early game for this. If if I were him, I'll just take this straight away because this is already a structured pawn defense. So this the, the pawn here in the late game is very, very easy to attack and easy to, to take advantage because the structure is not that good. So let's go back. So he played knight c3, I played g6. As you can see, I'm going to a Cecilia of dragon type variation. So he didn't, he wasn't able to achieve the purpose of playing the Snyder to counter the dragon. So he played here the knight d5, which is a good move. I played here the bishop g7 again. He has the advantage to take this f6 so I, I i can have a double pawn and he did that i take it now i take it with my bishop and we have exchange of bishop and this now totally my pawn structure is totally somehow not that great but let's see how how it goes so he played bishop c4 actually it should be bishop b5 based on the engine because as in chess you, you should be playing with threats to continue threats with development so this is what they call if you put the bishop on b5 that is what called threats with development 
you make threats while doing development. So here you just simply go for bishop c4, I castle, he play h3. So after he played h3, I think he was planning to, uh, he just want, he don't want to have uh, pinned on the g4 square. So that's the reason why he played h3. So here I played the knight e5. So this is quite very, very, very uh, aggressive move. So if you take this, then I will restructure my pawn back to e5. So that will definitely benefit me. But let's see. He didn't go for that. Instead, he back his bishop on e2. Here, I go for a5. So I was thinking that since this is already uh, Canchetto, I can distur disturb the queen side. And maybe I can push this pawn on a4. So I have a very good open file, a file. So here, if played d4, just uh, breaking the center. Here, I didn't. I didn't make the exchange instead. I go back to knight c6 and wait. And wait what will happen. He castled. And now it's time for my a4. My plan is to destroy this queen side. So I will have an activity on the queen side. So here he pushed the pawn. Uh, actually, this is a bad move because I'm not really sure, but the engine say it's a good move. But for me, theoretically, this is a bad one because as you can see, you have a uh light squared bishop and the pawns are in white so usually you don't want to put your pawn the same square as your bishop because it will hinder the the accessibility of your bishop so this theoretically this is not a good one but i'm not sure i'm not an engine i'm just a human then i played here the knight e5 and also it it, it has weakens the e5 square so i have x now to that point. now he choose the queen d2 which i believe it's not an engine move the engine move was knight d2 and after that maybe push the pawn on f4 to f5 so i think that will be the engine move he put the queen d2 here i go for the because i was thinking he was also want to go to uh, queen h6 so that's why i put my king here king g7 here he played h4 so he's planning to attack on my on the king side as well so i played just counter it by playing h5 so just neutralizing the h pawn here he go for the exchanges then i i have i have make uh, i have successfully uh put my pawn on the e file now so that's what's what that's what's my goal for my structure my pawn structure so that's a win for my pawn structure there so now he is very aggressively pushed the pawn actually i missed this because i, I think this this pawn is hanging on the h file and also but the engine move is saying that i should take this pawn let's see i didn't do that but instead i played f6 so again that is an advantage for white then bishop d3 <clears throat> as you can see the bishop now is blocking the bishop bishon is blocked by this e4 pawn so that's why theoretic theoretical level you don't place your pawn on the same square or the same uh, the same uh, colored square of your bishop because it hinders the devel development of your bishop so here he played. <clears throat> I played the f5 here. So I'm ready to have um, what do you call this exchange on this f and e file square. So he choose the f text e5, which is I think it should be okay. Then I take it back with my d pawn. He exchange on the other one e text e5. I take it with my bishop, and now he go for queen c3, in which. I'm not really sure if this is the good one because the queen c3 is not that good because it makes hang the pawn at d5. You should, based in the end, you should exchange the queen, the, the bishop here. But he goes for the queen c3 and this is very, very not good because I can easily take the pawn in the center and this is a win already for me because I'm one pawn up and I have a center pawn here. 
and also a C fold. I think I will gonna win this with I'm gonna win this game. But he has um, here a, a bishop making a threat on my queen, but I can have a double check here, which I can create double pass pawn. Then I have created a double pass pawn and this is quite too strong for black already. And the engine gives me a negative 4.5. That's almost a rook. And that's a winning already for black. As you can see, he still played uh, rook a e1, just putting a threat here on my a pawn. I didn't, I was not scared of that. I just exchanged first the pawn here so he could exchange there. Then after that, I put my, my other rook, not the other one, but my other rook on the e8 because my rook here is still active. He has a lot of open square or rook square to go. So here I pushed up, not yet pushed the pawn, but rook a d8. I'm now ready to push these two pawns to make it win. Here you play queen a4, sidestep, rook e7. You go for rook d2. Now I have to activate my king, king up 6 He now activate his king. Then and now I push e4, making a threat on e3. And he goes back because he don't have any option there. Then e3, pushing that pawn. And he goes back. And after bishop g4, this is totally over 4. Like here he go for bishop b5. I didn't get, uh, I didn't go for that pawn. Actually, yep. Bishop d3. I took that rook. Took that. Took that back. Then I go for rook d6. Then I'm now preparing to infiltrate the king side of white. So after king g2, rook a6. Actually, this is a blunder because I'm giving away my rook here. I didn't notice that, but still, it's still a win based on the engine. As you can see, this one and this one. Then after this, uh, you can push here. Take... Then I think I have a strong pass pawn here. It's still winning. But what he did here is after I put my rook here, he go for bishop, takes it, I take it, a4. I move my king, push the other pawn, c pawn to c3. And now d3 is a winning move for black because this two pawn is unstoppable. <clears throat> You cannot beat these two pawns and one way or the two pawns will get queen, will get promoted to queen and this is totally over for white. So that is your game, your Sicilian defense Snyder variation. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one and God bless all. Bye-bye.